What's going on everybody? Richie here. It's my deload week. That's why you see me with the rubber band about to do some pull-ups. Uh, so I just want to talk about uh, who, what, where, when, why, and how I deload pretty much. Uh, who's deloading? Me. <laughs> where? My garage. When? This week. Okay, now let's get to the why and how. Uh, why I deload. Uh, the, the point is pretty much uh, to overreach, right? So I, I train really hard for six weeks straight. Uh, I get to a point where I start exceeding my maximum recoverable volume. So I overreach and then I take a week that's an easy week um, where I go through the movement patterns and uh, uh, I'm pretty much keep the cycle of protein synthesis continuing. So, you know, I'm, I'm still growing, right? Because your body won't start regressing and losing progress until after three weeks of stagnation, right? So what I'm pretty much doing is I'm using a loophole uh, in, in that system to, uh, to continue to grow, to continue to make progress while also allowing myself to recover from the six weeks of hard training and then get back on the grind for another three to six weeks, Right, so uh, so that's pretty much why. Another reason why would be uh, you know if you're starting to feel um, some sort of inflammation in your joints and your shoulders, elbows, you know any uh, any connective tissue inflammation, um, experiencing any pain, injuries, discomfort, um, you know that that's a great time to take a deload. If you haven't taken one in a while and you're starting to feel any of that, that's your body probably telling you it's time to deload. So how I deload now, um, I'm really starting to enjoy uh, these deload weeks because. Um, you know, when you're hitting it hard, you know, for, for a certain amount of time, uh, you know, it, you're going through the motions and it, it becomes monotonous. It sort of becomes the same thing. Um, you know, trust me, I, I like training as much as the next guy. Uh, you know, I'd even go as far as to say I like training maybe twice as much as the next guy. But um, at the same time, uh, you, you know, shit gets repetitive. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you don't always wake up feeling like you're ready to just fucking kill it, you know? So the deload the deload weeks have become a great um a great time for me to sort of, you know, take the pressure off of training. It's just a laid back, easy workout. It's not a you know, I'm not spending all day in the gym, just, you know, getting in, hitting full body in an hour and a half, uh taking my time. And uh and just feeling good and refreshed after. Instead of feeling like, man, I really destroyed myself. Uh, you know, after these deload workouts, I feel refreshed. Um, I still have the rest of the day. I can, you know, get shit done <laughs> on my training days. Uh, so, uh, so, so that's what's kind of making me start to enjoy it a lot more. But pretty much what you've seen me do is um, with, uh, with the uh, with, uh, bench press and my weighted pull-ups, you know, I'm pretty much doing 55% of my training max and doing three sets of five. This is also a great time in these deload weeks to work on my technique, try new things. Um, you know, here you see me doing a set of squats. Look at my pinkies. I've been feeling a little bit of wrist pain in my squat because I do it extreme. I go extremely low on my uh, shoulder girdle to help me get into better position. It's something I've been experimenting with. And what better time to try something new than, you know, on a low pressure day. As you can see, I, I have the pin set a little bit lower than normal too. Really trying to get better at the low bar squat because I want to get better depth. I noticed in some of my videos that I'm having, um, you know, a lot of um, arching in my lower back that I want to prevent during my squat. So, um, you know, just going back to the drawing board, you know, going back to those low bar tutorial videos that, uh, you know, Mark Ripito from Starting Strength posted because that's felt the most comfortable to me. That's been the, you know... I feel like the best kind of squat for my body type and my anthropometry. So, you know, just going back and um, and revisiting the technique on this deload week. Now, um, there's a few different ways you could deload. One I just said, you know, you could drop to 50, 55% of your training max and do three sets of five. Uh, or you could do what I'm doing here and go up and wait a little bit. At the end of the day, you just need to do... You know, you, you want to do about 50% less volume uh, than you would on a normal training week. How do we calculate volume? Sets times reps times pounds. 
right? That's your total volume for the workout. So there's many different ways that you can do 50% of the volume. Uh, for example, one thing that I'll do on my, uh, on my deadlift day my, for my deadlift deloads is instead of working up to um, you know, 55% of my training max and doing three, sing- um, and doing, uh, three sets of five, you know, I might just calculate, hmm, what's 15, what's 15 reps? Oh, it, it calculates out to 82% of my training max. Let me just work up to one single. Since all I do for deadlifts is singles anyway, let me just work up to a single of 82% of my training max, do it double overhand, and call it a day. And that's pretty much what I did. So there's a few different ways. Um, three sets of five is one. Uh, you know, you could work up to a, to a single that's a significantly you know, lighter weight. At the end of the day, it's still less tonnage. It's still less volume. Here's another way you're going to see me doing it. So um, I'm trying to let my grip recover. So yeah, I'm using, I'm using wrist straps for a 135-pound <laughs> Romanian deadlift. Um, and how about instead of doing three sets of five, you do one set of 15. That way you still feel like you're getting a workout. If you're a volume guy, you know, deloading might be kind of hard, right? Because you're like, you know, you're used to doing more, doing more, doing more. You know, how about working up to... Uh, you know, 50% and doing one set of 15. I'm telling you, after this set right here, I was feeling it, you know, and I can't afford to skip RDLs because that's, um, you know, that's my main source of stretching as well in my hamstrings. So, uh, you know, I did one set of 15 here and I felt it. And uh, what it lets me know is, okay, I'm getting a better training stimulus out of doing higher reps with Romanian deadlifts. That might be something I take into consideration when, I, uh, I, in my next training block, in the next, you know, three, three to four weeks, I might say, hmm, maybe I'm getting more out of RDLs if I do, you know, if I work from nine to 12 reps instead of five to eight reps, because my form is better, my technique is better, um, it's less axial loading on the spine. So, you know, that's what these deload weeks are for, for finding out new things for, for trying new techniques, allowing yourself to recover while still going through the motions, right? So it's not like I'm just taking a, an entire week off and then I come back next week and then I, and then I feel like, like weak as shit, you know? Uh, I'm continuing that muscle protein synthesis, letting my um, connective tissue all recover. So next week I come back in feeling fresh, strong, ready to go, but not ice cold like I took a whole week off from training. And that's the point. These deload weeks, although you're doing less volume, less tonnage during them, um, they actually are a step forward. And that's how I have, I've come to, to look at it now. Um, and I'm just going to appreciate the rest, recover, come back and kill it this next training block. All right, guys, that's how I do my deload. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll talk to you soon.